Hello friends. About 10 months ago I made my first YouTube video. My only YouTube video. It took me a ridiculous amount of motivation to do, a ridiculous amount of time to do, and a little bit of a confidence kick to finally press that publish button. Well, I'm back with the second video. I thought it'd be quite good to make the second video about the same sort of thing, because it's about a folding phone. I didn't travel down to Samsung KX this time, which is a bit of a bummer. I didn't only just spend a couple of times with the phone in question. I actually got to have one, use one, and make it my everyday phone for a couple of weeks now. This is the Galaxy Fold 2. Well, to give it its full name, it's the Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G, which is just ridiculous. But in all honesty, I really wanted the first version of the Fold, but there were a few caveats in there that I wasn't quite comfortable with. There was a few things in question that I had my concerns about and I left it be. Um, I was very tempted to pick one up when I was down there with hands on, but you get caught in this reality distortion field, don't you? But I waited. I waited and waited and waited. I had the Z Flip for a little while with the similar sort of concerns, but didn't really offer anything to me. So when Samsung announced the Z Fold 2, I pre-ordered on the first day of release and I got ridiculously overexcited. These sorts of new things in technology are why I get excited about things. I love technology, I'm not really bothered about specs and who's has the greatest megapixel, but I'm really interested in new innovations and new devices that can really change the way that we think about a smartphone. And essentially that's what this phone does. Um, the, the Z Fold 2 answers a lot of the criticisms that the original version has and gives everybody the chance to own a device that really the first version should have been. There is nothing to compare this phone to on the market currently because this is a tablet that folds into a phone and that's what you've got to think about it as. This is a completely new form factor really and there's some bonuses that come with that and there's also some caveats that you've got to take into account. In its folded form, the Z Fold 2 is well balanced. Um, it doesn't feel overly cumbersome. It is heavy, there's no getting around it. There's gonna be some heft in there for you to get used to either when it's in your hand or it's in your pocket. Some people view that as a positive, um, and I would agree with that. The, the Z Fold 2 feels a lot more premium than the first version did. It feels almost as if they've taken another step up in quality. A lot of people describe it as this, it feels like there's no air inside the device. It's absolutely solid, finished with metal and glass, and you won't be disappointed when you take it out of the box. Samsung have really paid attention to making the device feel comfortable in the hand. Um, they've really paid attention to the way that it feels. Um, despite a few sharp corners on the, on the device, it's actually quite comfortable to hold in its folded form. It's also very slim, so it's a little bit easier to hold than something like the Note 20 Ultra that's big and square and wide. So it's actually quite um, nice to use. But it's still a big phone, there's no, there's no getting away around it. It's very heavy, it's 282 grams. It feels a bit strange in your pocket. Um, a lot of people have said that it's like, is that a phone in your pocket or are you pleased to see me? It takes a, a lot of getting used to, so much so that within the first few hours of it, of actually using the device out and about, I was very skeptical about whether I was gonna keep this device going forward. I persevered with it and you do get used to it going forward, but it's, it's a bludgeoning tool, same as the first one was. If you bought this device, you're not really gonna be bothered about its folding form though. You're gonna be bothered about that great big 7.6 inch screen that's inside and it's frankly gorgeous to use. It uses adapted refresh rate that goes up to 120 hertz and frankly, absolutely everything looks gorgeous on that screen. You can obviously multitask, you can consume media like there's no tomorrow, and you can really get some productivity in on the go with that great big screen in the middle. Because in actual fact, you don't really realize how useful this screen's gonna be for you until the first few times that you've used it. There's a real delightful moment when you get a notification or something comes through on your phone and you open the device up and you start typing away or whatever it is, responding to an email or a text message or whatever it may be and it really starts to dawn on you very, very quickly just how useful this device is gonna be. I spend a lot of my time sat in the car waiting for the kids or picking my wife up or whatever it may be and being able to just fold that great big screen out, breeze through your emails or answer all the, your group chats or go through Slack, whatever it may be, it's very, very difficult for you to go back to anything different, which makes it easier to put up with all those caveats. 
Samsung have added in some really nice touches into the software to make that great big screen really useful as well. They've split their stock keyboard in half so it's really, really easy for you to type with two thumbs. And they've also got gestures working really, really well on the device to really maximize the screen estate. Samsung being Samsung, obviously there's some software quirks in there. Sometimes it gets a bit frustrating when you're trying to swipe up to go back home and the app that you're using is trying to do something completely different. And the back swipe from the side of the screen doesn't always do exactly what you want it to do. But hey, this is still Android. There's still a back button that sometimes does what you want it to do and sometimes doesn't. The other little quirk that you're going to have to get used to as well is the inside screen protector and also if you've got this Mystic Black version that I have is an absolute fingerprint magnet. You can clean it, you can wash your hands as much as you like, it doesn't make any difference. The fingerprints just come up all over the place. When I was taking photos for the written review I had to put some latex gloves on because I just was polishing it and polishing it and polishing it. So you're just going to have to get used to that unfortunately. Most people that go for the Mystic Bronze, it's a matte finish. So you won't have the, the same outside problem with fingerprints, but it's pink, so. The other great thing that Samsung have done with the Z Fold 2 is flex mode. They've stolen this straight from the Z Flip. Um, it allows you to do things like watch YouTube videos and scroll through the content and the comments at the bottom, or divide things in half, like uh, if you're on a duo call or something like that. The apps that do this are few and far between, unfortunately. Hopefully we'll see more stuff go forwards, but it's actually quite nice to be able to prop a phone up and kind of half watch a YouTube video when you're doing something else. While we're talking about YouTube, this is a media consumption device. You're gonna really enjoy watching those videos on this great big screen. Yes, there is black bars top and bottom, but it doesn't distract from the videos being really immersive and they're like nothing else that I've ever used on a device. One thing that I've really enjoyed as well is being able to open the phone up and read. The Kindle app is really good on this device, as is the Pocket app. It allows me to, rather than scrolling through social media, actually consume something that's worthwhile. So I've spent a lot of the time just laid, sitting reading and enjoying using the device. It is a little heavy in its folded out state. You have to still use the pinky under the screen, but you do get used to it. The biggest surprise to me has been the amount of times that I've used the cover screen. This is a great little screen, it's nice and narrow, so it's easy to fit into your hand, so it's perfectly suited to scrolling through Twitter or something like that, um, but typing on it is a little bit difficult, so uh, in enabling the swipe on the keyboard will definitely help. But the great thing about it is if you're interacting with the device and you need to get something done, you just open the device up and it continues on the inner screen. The last thing we come to is the camera. This is the only thing that lets the device down, in my opinion. A lot of people have raved about it. There is nothing inherently bad about the sensors that they use. It uses a three 12 megapixel setup with an ultra wide, a wide, and a telephoto. They get the job done. They're what I would describe as good, perfectly capable of getting you good shots. In good light, you'll get some tremendous results and you'll get some good shots. Unfortunately, they do lack a lot of detail in the photos that I've experienced. And if you have anything other than good light, you do end up with a lot of grain, a lot of washed out colors, and a lot of smudgy skin tones. It's the only thing that disappoints me from the device. I'd like to see Samsung work a bit harder on the camera going forwards, but I don't think this is gonna be a deal breaker for a lot of people that buy this device. However, if you are expecting Uber flagship quality photos, like you are with the Note 20 Ultra, you're gonna be disappointed, unfortunately. About two or three days into using the device, I was considering just putting it back in the box and returning it straight away. However, I got used to the weight. I got used to the trade-offs that the, the device dictates, and I got used to the way that you have to change the way that you think about using a smartphone. The battery life has been absolutely phenomenal for me. Um, I'm not a, what I would call a heavy user, but you will see north of six hours of screen on time and still have sort of 20% by bedtime. Overall, the conclusions on this device are very tricky for me. I understand that this device is very niche to people and I understand that it's created quite a lot of buzz. The people that have bought this device very early in the life cycle are, are definitely excited about it and are definitely motivated towards the device. There are trade-offs with this device. It is very, very heavy. There is no two ways getting around it. If you're perfectly happy with that, then you're not going to be disappointed with that. What I would say to most people that are considering buying the device is probably go and have a look at it. 
See if you can go to a Samsung store or see if your local shop has got one that you can have a look at. Put it in your pocket, take it out of your pocket, handle it for a little while and see if that's really where you want to go forwards. Really the conclusion comes down to, does this outweigh this? Does using a great big screen outweigh carrying around a bit of a brick the rest of the time? If you're in the market for the biggest, nicest screen for consuming media, for reading, for answering emails, for productivity, whatever you want and you, you are quite happy to carry around a device like that, this is the device for you. With that said, it's £1,800 in the UK, $2,000 in the US. I would like to see Samsung really start to step up their game with this sort of price range. This is another step above like a, a flagship smartphone. This is like an Uber flagship smartphone. At this sort of price point, I'd want a bit of a better camera. I would want the fragility concerns that I still have with the screen to be sorted out. However, bear in mind this is only the second version of the device. There's obviously nothing else on the market to compare it to and people are going to buy this device and they're going to love it. I would never talk anybody out of buying one, but you've really got to bear those concerns in mind. Overall, I've really enjoyed using this. It's not going to become my daily driver because I don't really find the value in £1,800, but many of you will. But until next time, hopefully it won't be another 10 months. Hopefully I'll have some more devices to review or I might just make some random videos just to get myself on YouTube some more. Take the very best care of yourself, my friends, and hopefully I'll speak to you soon.